Hey guys, before we get into today's episode about Ravens running back Justice Hill, I just figured I'd let you guys know that today's episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. If you've never used SeatGeek before, you can save $20 on your first purchase just by entering the promo code JKS. Of course, with the preseason in full swing and the regular season right around the corner, there is no better time to get tickets for this season than right now, and if you use the promo code JKS on your first purchase, it's $20 off, so it's really a great deal. Also, SeatGeek is also good for concerts and comedy events and pretty much almost anything you need a ticket for, so if that's something you're interested in, the link is in the description below. Again, $20 off, just use the promo code JKS, you really can't beat that. And anyway, back to your regularly scheduled video. So one person this preseason that I definitely was interested about seeing play for the first time in an NFL uniform was Justice Hill, the fourth round pick that Baltimore selected. I know fourth round picks only mean so much, but you know, it's the running back position where rookie players can definitely have an immediate impact. And also, I was pretty high on Justice Hill coming out of the draft. I think he's an explosive player in a lot of ways, and I was excited to see how he was going to do in a Baltimore uniform. And in my opinion, he didn't disappoint. I mean, statistics-wise, there's nothing really too much to write home about. I mean, 10 rushes, 433 yards. But as you all know, you can only control what you can control, and average yards per carry isn't always the best way to tell how good of a running back somebody is, because sometimes the offensive line is just blocking well in front of you, or sometimes it's just not blocking well in front of you. Like, there were some plays where Hill really just had no chance at all during some of these plays. Like, take a look at this one right here. It's a pretty simple blocking concept. What Baltimore is going to do is have four 1-1 one -one matchups with those four Jaguars who are on the line, and then they'll send their center up to make sure that he's blocking that Jaguar who's over there. The whole idea behind this from Baltimore's perspective is since you are running four wide, then hopefully the Jaguars will kind of spread out. However, one thing you'll notice right off the bat is that the Jaguars are not spread out. They're clearly in zone here, and they have three Jaguars who are still, you know, right along that middle of the screen. So just on paper, right off the bat, it's not a great situation. However, also another problem is it relies on all five of your offensive linemen to be able to make blocks. So it's not a great situation, but it still can work out. If all five offensive linemen do make their blocks well and Hill is able to accelerate quickly, he can still pick up some yards here. But basically what I'm trying to say is that more things are going to have to go right than typically have to go right on a certain play. So first, Hill is going to more slowly go to the bottom half of the screen as he's getting ready to try to accelerate quickly. However, take a look at that Jaguar right there. He's easily winning his one-on-one matchup, and I mean, there's nothing Hill can do. I don't care how fast you can accelerate. I mean, if there's a Jaguar right in front of you, you're going to get tackled more often than not. So that's kind of what I mean when I say he had some plays that there was just no chance of him realistically being able to pick up some yards. I mean, on that play, he did have to accelerate as quick as possible to try to get past those linebackers. Since only one of the three linebackers was going to get blocked, he was going to have to try to accelerate and try to get around them. But then when one of the offensive linemen lost their one-on-one -on -one matchup, then because he was accelerating so quickly to try to get past those linebackers, then that Jaguar was able to run over and make a tackle. It was just a bad situation for Hill. There was also this play where first things first, the left tackle and tight end are both going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups with the two edge rushers on both sides of the screen. And then in terms of the middle of the screen, there's going to be two combination blocks where both of the left guard and center and then right guard and right tackle are all going to have double teams right now. But then somebody on both of those combination blocks will get off those blocks and move up the block linebackers right over there. That's the way this play is supposed to work on paper. However, that is not always the way that it ends up working out. I mean, as you see right here, okay, so that didn't really work out too well. One of the Jaguars is doing a great job of kind of taking on that double team and not allowing a Raven to get off the double team and move up the block that linebacker right there. But then for Hill, who is trying to use his great acceleration to pick up some yards, and his acceleration really is great, and I'll get into that a little bit later on in this video. His acceleration is really what makes him key. But when he's trying to use that to his advantage, it doesn't work out when Jaguars are getting free and able to get in position to make a tackle and that's what happened there. So I just kind of wanted to show those couple of plays just to let you guys know that, okay, not all of these shorter runs were his fault necessarily. Sometimes the offensive line just wasn't doing their job. I'm just showing that to let you know that, listen, don't get too worried about Justice Hill just because he only had 3.3 yards per carry. I thought he actually looked pretty good in the first preseason game. I mean, he might not have been the key highlight from that game. The highlight was probably Kenny Young's hit. I mean, that was pretty crazy. Also, did you see that Justin Tucker responded on Instagram with, oh lord? That's pretty hilarious. But anyways, moving on. One play that impressed me from Hill is actually a play where he didn't even touch the ball at all, but it was still impressive to me, was this one where he's going to be running a route here. What he's going to be doing is running just, you know, just a curl route right there. You know, he's running a check down here. If the quarterback doesn't like the route that he sees or, you know, doesn't like anything downfield, then he gets Hill. They pick up at least some positive yards. But one thing I really like about this from Hill is look at how quickly, first off, he accelerates. So, okay, great acceleration, gets right to his spot very quickly. So, okay, he got to his spot very quickly. That's what you want to see Hill do, so good job by him for 
for doing that. However, of course, the whole point of this route from Hill isn't just to get to that spot as quickly as you can. You have to also get your body turned around and get ready to potentially make a catch. So now he's kind of just going to have to twist his body and stop on a dime, which is definitely not easy to do at all. But he's going to manage to do that as well. I mean, he was wide open there, and honestly, the quarterback probably should have hit him because he would have easily been able to pick up at least like five yards or so. Listen, I get that that's not necessarily the most flashy play, but I really like that play a lot, actually. For one thing, it just shows that he hustles and does the little things right, which is something you do like to see if you are a coach. But I also personally felt like it just shows that, he, okay, this guy has great acceleration and can be effective in a passing game. He can run those routes very quickly and very well. I mean, route running is important in the halfback position. Look at Le'Veon Bell. A huge part of the reason why he's so successful is his route running. And even on a check down, you do often have to run a route. And that's what Hill did there, and so good job for him. I mean, really well done there. Okay, so let's move on to some plays that worked out and that he did touch the ball in, and this one will be a good one. First off, one interesting thing that Baltimore is going to do is have their center and tight end, who's on the bottom half of the screen, both move up to block those two Jacksonville linebackers who are right over there. But then also what they're going to do is have their right tackle move in to block that interior lineman, and then it'll pull their right guard over to block that Jaguar who's right over there. So, you know, they're trying to create some leverage here, essentially, so that way they can get Hill to run in between those two guys. It's not a bad idea, and it is something that Baltimore likes to do quite often, but again, it's one of those plays that it is going to rely on acceleration to a degree. Hill is going to have to get up to his top speed quickly. And so, okay, as of right here is when Justice Hill takes the handoff. But I like about Hill, for one thing, is look at how far his knees are bent. I know that might seem like a small thing, but it actually isn't. You want to bend your knees a lot. It'll give you a lot more control if you bend your knees, honestly, in pretty much any sport. I don't know, maybe not water polo, but for most sports, if you bend your knees, you can move a lot quicker. I mean, think about basketball. Every basketball poster where someone is dribbling, their knees are basically like what hills are. They're very bent. You want to keep those knees low because watch his explosiveness once he gets the ball and once he starts moving. I mean, that's what you love to see. Just so explosive. Again, the blocking could have done a better job, but he was still able to pick up those yards just by the fact that he was able to run so quickly. You know what I often talk about on this channel? I'm less concerned about how quick your 40-yard dash is and more concerned about just how are you at accelerating because getting up to that top speed is more important than actually having a slightly faster top speed. I mean, if you're in the NFL and you're a halfback, chances are you're going to have a pretty high top speed, but it's about getting to that top speed quickly and that's what Hill can do and you know if you are a guy who's 201 pounds you are going to have to probably be pretty quick and he definitely is pretty quick and also his 40 yard dash was pretty good it was 4.4 I mean you'll definitely take that but I'm just trying to say basically is that listen we all know he's fast but not only is he fast but he accelerates quickly and that combination is absolutely deadly and it's impactful on several different ways. Like, if you take a look at this one, it's going to be a third down and three here. So, okay, important to get three yards. It's going to be man coverage. And so what the Baltimore Ravens are going to do is they're going to have the receiver actually run up to the middle of the screen right over there. And they'll have the halfback, Justice Hill, run down to the bottom half of the screen. So, you know, for Hill, this is actually a pretty favorable matchup because you're going up against a linebacker and you could potentially even have a head start. Now, of course, the disadvantage is you're going to have to look back and make a catch before running over to the first down. So that's kind of where it evens out in a way. Yes, you have a couple of steps, but also you have to look back and make the catch. So that's how it'll even out. And take a look at what's going to happen once this ball is snapped. As you see pretty clearly, Hill definitely does have a few steps on that linebacker. You look and Hill is farther down through the hash marks to the bottom half of the screen than the linebacker is. But he is going to have to look back. And honestly, his quarterback isn't going to do him a lot of favors on this one. The throw is further behind Hill than Hill probably would have liked. So this is now definitely a more difficult situation when he already had a few steps. But now it's more of a tough situation. If he was hit in stride, this probably would have been an easy first down. However, because of that later throw, this now means that he's going to have to accelerate very quickly. I mean, there's two Jaguars in the area. He's going to have to get to top speed to make sure that he just gets those few yards. But not only is he able to do that, he's able to accelerate quickly enough to avoid a tackle, stay in bounds, and even pick up a decent gain. I mean, that's just, that's good football right there. That's what you like to see. It was A, good route running, B, good acceleration, and then C, being able to move while you're accelerating and then be able to get around a guy. I mean, that you love to see that. And not just that, but he also didn't go down at the end there. He ran straight into number 38 there and tried to pick up as many yards as he possibly could. Just an all-around great play from Hill. It's something you love to see, and honestly, the more and more I'm watching Justice Hill, the more and more I'm saying, like, listen, this guy could be a fantasy sleeper next year. Maybe pick him up in a late round, take a flyer on him, because I could definitely see him getting a decent amount of carries and doing well on those carries. Again, I know the 3.3 yards per carry, but I wouldn't be worried about that. I thought that he personally actually looked really good. I do think that running back one position for Baltimore is still pretty up in the air. I think they do have some good backs ahead of him, but I definitely think he has the possibility to work his way up to that number one running back role. I think he has the chance to. 
But one way that can help you is if you do all the little things right as well. If you can be effective in all types of plays. And Justice Hill, while he is a bit undersized, actually can block all right. More specifically, he can just put himself in position to make a block. But like, take a look at this play, for example, where it's going to be a seven-man rush right here. So, you know, for Hill, he has to block. And worth mentioning, it probably would have only been a six-man rush had Hill ran out and run a route. But since Hill is not going to be running a route, since he's going to be blocking, this now means that, okay, there's going to be a seven-man rush. But also, okay, if there's just going to be seven men rushing the passer, what does that mean? It means that it's going to be all one-on-one -on -one matchups in the secondary. There's no way you can double-team someone because that would leave someone else completely wide open. So for Hill, what do you do? Well, one thing you probably do before the ball is even snapped is just take a look at which side has more people on it. There's four Jaguars who are going to be to the right of the center than to the left of the center. So for Hill, that's where he's going to look. This is actually something they teach you in baseball. You know, before every pitch is thrown, you should know what to do with the ball once the ball comes to you. If there is a runner on third and one out and you're playing left field, you should know that if there's a fly ball, then you should try to throw it home to get the runner out at home potentially. If you're playing center field and there's a runner on first, well then if it's a line drive, you should know to try to throw it to third to make sure that the runner doesn't go first to third. Well in football, it's very much the same way. If you're a halfback and you're blocking, you should look beforehand to figure out who you're going to block in each situation. If it's a five-man rush, you should know who you're going to help, and if it's a six-man or seven-man rush, then you should also know who you should run over and try to block. You should know what's going to happen in each one of those situations. And so for Hill, the guy who he should block is going to be that Jaguar right there. Just of the positioning, he knows, okay, if all seven of them block, I run over, block that Jaguar, which should give us enough time for somebody to get open, potentially. It's a third down and six, so as long as somebody can get open very quickly and pick up six yards, that's all Baltimore needs. And one thing, if you look at Hill, is again, he's getting very low here. I mean, for one thing, just imagine being Hill right now, going up against a guy who probably weighs 100 more pounds than you, but still being able to be ready to make a block. That's confidence right there. It's the confidence you need to have if you're going to play in the NFL, and he definitely has it. But more importantly, it's good positioning he's getting low and he's getting ready to make a block he does run over and make his block and that allows Baltimore to then throw an interception so you know it didn't really work out the way it's planned but you know hey he did his part you can only control what you can control but I thought Hill did a very good job there again you can't really see the block itself too well just because there's offensive linemen in the way but I thought the fact that he was just aware enough to get in the correct positioning was honestly worth talking about in this video because that was a very good job by him so okay, we realize now that he can be effective in passing situations, he can be effective in running situations, especially when things go right, but what happens in a running situation when things go wrong? Well, I'll tell you, something like this, where it's going to kind of be an RPO type situation where Hill is going to be running down to the middle of the screen, and take a look at what happens once this ball is snapped. More specifically, there are going to be two Jaguars who are right in Justice Hill's face at this point. There was actually a linebacker who blitzed in, and that's the guy on the bottom half of the screen, so I don't think he's supposed to be there at all. However, the Jaguar on the top half of the screen totally is supposed to be there. The way it's supposed to work, actually, for Hill, the way this is supposed to work, actually, for the quarterback is you say, hey, if I think I have enough leverage that I can run up to the top half of the screen and get around him, then I keep the ball myself and run up to the top half of the screen. If I don't, I just hand it off to Hill, Hill does whatever Hill does. That's the way this play is supposed to work. And I think this play is important because this is something that Hill will probably have to run a lot with Lamar Jackson as his quarterback. But it also is important because Hill has to accelerate quickly. The second the quarterback gives the ball to Hill and Hill starts running, well, Hill can't just slowly get up there because then the Jaguars player could realize, oh, you have the ball, I should tackle you. But again, watch his acceleration right after getting the ball. Again, he gets tackled right away, largely just because of that other linebacker who was in the area. But I thought the acceleration itself to just pick up those yards was incredible. A lot of players don't pick up any yard. A lot of players go down and lose yards on that play because they wouldn't have been able to accelerate that quickly. But Hill was able to accelerate quickly, and that's what turned a negative to a positive gain. And so again, you know, plays like that are the reason why I will say things like, well, I don't necessarily put too much stock into yards per carry. Because while yards per carry can be a pretty decent tool, especially if you're comparing players who both play on the same team. It changes in the preseason, obviously, because not everyone has the same five blockers in front of them. But it also changes just in the sense that sometimes you make a great two-yard run. I mean, that was a great two-yard run by Hill. Those things do happen. Hill might not have lit up the stat sheet. However, I thought he did a good job running the ball. I was impressed by Hill. And again, I think Hill is going to be a pretty good player. And you know, that's the advantage of drafting a rookie running back, is it is one of those positions that tends to have an immediate impact. It doesn't really take running backs too long to get much better. I like Justice Hill. I thought he looked pretty good. I'd like to know what you guys thought. And as always, thanks for watching.